The documentary you are about to see was filmed and edited by my father, Franz Bauer. This was about 60 years ago when I was a little boy. Being a little boy, however, did not keep me from going with him on location when he was doing his filming. I learned the craft right there and then from him. And this is also why I vividly remember most of the scenes you will see in this movie. I can even remember the names of the different people that were shown. My father was an extremely gifted filmmaker. He approached movie making with an eye for the art. The proper composition of the shot being the most important aspect for him. Often he was painting a beautiful picture with film, using color and movement to bring to the screen what he envisioned in his mind's eye. Speaking of color, starting in the late 1950s, my father had switched from the more expensive 9.5mm film format to double 8mm, which was affordable and allowed him to almost exclusively film in color, on Kodachrome. I honestly believe that Kodachrome was the best color film ever made. But don't just take my word for it. See for yourself and what will be coming to you in a moment. You may have been wondering why the scenes you are seeing now look so film-like. Well, they were shot on real film with the same camera my father used 60 years ago. An Oymic C3R or Umic C3R as you would say here in the US. A double 8 millimeter camera. Here it is. It has a spring motor. You wind it up. It needs no batteries and it also has a built-in light meter. After photographic film had been replaced with home video, very unfortunately for many years it was impossible to shoot color film with such a camera, since Kodachrome and any other color film had been discontinued. A few months ago, the film photography project brought color film back to double 8 mm and this spawned our film project because now I can show you in an authentic way how my father made movies with such a camera. So what is this film all about? The documentary will show you regular life in a small town in Austria. Austria is a country in the center of Europe. Vienna is its capital. And the small town Wieselburg is about 100 kilometers or 60 miles west of it. My father called the film Wieselburg 1960 to 1965. It will show you how the town's transformation started from a quaint little city into a modern town. My father was part of the city council during these years and you can see him in this picture among other city council members. He thought it would be wonderful to have a record and film of the events he witnessed or made happen. And this is much different from still photographs since only moving images let you experience the immediacy of the moment and the emotions associated with it. Motion pictures also truly let you relive the moments, no matter how long ago they happened. I actually found a photograph in which my father is shown. Here, on the right side, right next to the mayor and the previous mayor of the town. He is documenting an event holding his film camera. By the way, all the shots you will see in this film are handheld. My father's hand was as steady as a tripod. My father's films were conceived as silent movies. He had honed the craft of silent filmmaking and then editing the movie to tell a story visually to some great perfection. Today you will see my father's director's cut of this documentary. He did not assemble the scenes in chronological order. No, instead he edited them so you would find the film interesting and entertaining. For some scenes I did find sound that was recorded at that time, for others 
Sound effects were added to enhance the visual experience. But some sequences just had to remain silent. Only music and narration will guide you through them. Sound effects would have distracted from how my father wanted to show them to you. We will also see some interesting sports moments in this documentary, for which I am not really qualified to narrate them. So I asked my friends Danny and Kenny, right over there, both noted athletes and football players, to narrate these scenes with me. I'm sure you're curious now. So let's not wait any longer and see my father's documentary. My name is Gerhard Bauer, speaking for Phonotone Movies. I wish you lots of fun with this special film. It is the year 1960, a sunny fall day. This is the Kleine Erlauf, the small river Erlauf, which gently flows into the large river Erlauf. Here is the railroad bridge, allowing the steam train to cross the river. And here is the big steel market bridge built in 1877, leading to the market square. Hardly any traffic, pedestrians mainly. A beautiful little town. This peaceful scene changed dramatically in 1963 when the main street was broadened, designed to bring traffic into the town. People thought this would benefit local businesses. The buildings along the century-old road leading into the pre-Alpine region of Lower Austria had to give way to progress and industrialization in the 1960s. Beyond the old marketplace, the road construction continues. Here comes my first appearance in this movie. Standing on a pile of rubble, a bit scared of all of that commotion. Particularly the pneumatic hammer was something I thought did not fit the serenity of the old town. But what would I know about bringing traffic into town to increase commerce? I was just a little boy. Road construction at that time was serious and labor-intensive. There were no laser tools. Hand measurements were taken under the watchful eye of the civil engineer. You can see that stones marking the edge of the road were even hand-chiseled. After a gravel bed had been laid and secured, asphalt was poured and then carefully flattened for a smooth surface with a medium-sized road roller. Here is a first glimpse at the partially finished new road, which will run all the way through the marketplace, eventually continuing to the road construction project on the other side of town. While all of this heavy road building was going on, the local traffic had to be diverted and the gas station did not get much business, but that would soon be over. Yes, young man, the old days of getting to the Autobahn through many kilometers of country roads are about to be over. Only five minutes on the new road and you are connected to the speedy autobahn, bringing more traffic to the old town square. With the new road construction, a street lighting system also comes to the town. Efficient fluorescent lights will illuminate paved and broadened streets during the night. So here is how the new main street looks after all that demolition. The bottleneck has been eliminated and a new brick house has been built. A few months down the road, this will be a new general store. I don't know if you noticed, transportation on two wheels was quite popular at that time, in spite of the sometimes really rough weather. Now we have arrived at the most expensive and most elaborate construction project. The replacement of the steel market bridge from 1877 with a new reinforced concrete bridge, holding up to the anticipated heavy traffic being brought to the town much better. For that, 
a lot of ground had to be cleared and a temporary bridge had to be built. All of this happened in 1964. The winter brought the bridge building project to an anticipated halt. Here you can see how it all looked when it was snowed in. The temporary bridge on the left and the foundation for the new bridge on the right. Can you see that water flowing out of this spot? Whatever that was good for, I don't know. And there is this lonesome little house in the middle of the construction project, whatever that may be. Oh no, I don't think it is what you think it was used for. In the spring, construction resumes. The bridge will soon be opened and it will work even better than anticipated. It will bring a huge influx of traffic to Wieselburg, so even traffic lights will have to be installed in the long run. While the new main street is being built, the town also wants to modernize its other infrastructure. For decades, a creek has been running through the middle of the town, parallel to the small river Erlauf. To gain more land, it was decided to put it underground, and here you can see how it was done. Large concrete tubes were laid, so the creek could be diverted into them and then disappear from the surface. This was also combined with the extension of the town's sewer system. It required quite some manual trench digging since heavy machinery could not easily access the construction sites without a lot of damage to existing buildings. Whenever the weather allowed, work continued, which also provided the construction workers with some income during the slow winter season. On a side note, many of the town's streets were still dirt roads, just like this one. Finally, at the conclusion of the construction project, the new streetlights went on. With this, the town had arrived in the modern world of the mid-1960s. In 1963, a new high school had been completed. As I mentioned before, my father was on the city council, where he was in charge of the new school project. With the help of a skilled architect, he designed a high school building in the modern style of the 1960s. This fountain is an example of what he thought would be really nice to look at. Lots of windows for beautifully lit hallways was what my father wanted. Also a nice athletic hall, again with great windows. Look at the school building from the outside and you might not be able to distinguish it from the buildings we now build 55 years later. The new building style is also reflected in new affordable housing buildings that went up on the other end of town. Another quick side note, the little boy you will see in a moment is not me. I was with my father while he filmed this and I pointed out to him that the boy had a little stick and had just tried to stick it into the ground floor balcony. So naughty. Now a solemn moment in our movie. Here we see the dedication of the new mortuary built by the city and opened in 1961. Before it was built, the dead had to be laid out in their homes so people could come and pay their last respect. The new mortuary was built right next to the church and the graveyard, making funeral preparations a bit easier. Here you can see the mortuary's dedication and blessing ceremony. The mayor, Mr. Josef Tollmann, and another local dignitary are giving their dedication speeches and they are reminding everyone that there may be a time in the future when they also might be viewed in this mortuary and laid to rest 
in the adjacent cemetery. Austria has, for many centuries, been a predominantly Catholic country, and like almost every other town, Wieselburg had their revered town's priest serve for many decades. During the 1960s, Mr. Leopold Teufel was Wieselburg's priest. Here you see him getting the blessing ceremony underway. For this scene, we will leave you with a view of the well-cared-for cemetery and the icon of the town, the church steeple, as it has been seen for many decades. Wieselburg also had a taste for playing sports, and it was decided that a new soccer field was needed, so the soccer club Wieselburg could play games against other rival sports clubs. On October 10, 1962, the new soccer field was opened. Viewers were plenty in these days, in spite of the cold wind blowing in October. For the opening, the organizers had to rent a loudspeaker car, so they could interview the respective people involved in making the sports field a reality, like Wieselburg's mayor, Mr. Tollmann. The sports club Wieselburg can be seen in the blue outfit with Herbert Siedek as their president and coach. There's a lot of anticipation among the spectators and while we are waiting for the introduction of the rival soccer team to be completed, one of Wieselburg's legendary players needs to be mentioned, Karl Niebauer, a natural in soccer, leading Wieselburg to their master title three times. And here they come, Danny and Kenny. You have more insight into the game. Tell us what's going on here. It looks like we have a great matchup today. The players are lining up and they look excited to get started. Wow, look at the purple team's ball control. Wow, that guy's quick. That's a big kick. Looks like it's going out of bounds. Free kick. The teams are shooting it back and forth. It's going back and forth. This looks like it'll be a good game. Man, I wonder who's going to win. Oh, the white team finally clears it. Who are you rooting for, Dan? I think I'm going for the white team. Oh, nice. That's a close one. Ooh, just overhead the goal. The goalie clears it. Wow, he cleared it again. Oh, wide right. Nice save by the goalie. Great save. Just to the right. And he finally clears it again. They go wow. back and forth again. Tatsidek seems to be watching skeptically. Wow, what a great contest. The goalie's finally getting some help from his teammates, but here they come again. He lays out for the play. Great defense by the purple team. Slide kick, and the game's over. We are staying with sports in Wieselburg, as this one was among the most beloved during the winter month, ice skating. A simple but very effective ice skating ring was generated each winter by just spraying water and letting it freeze on one of the exhibition fields in the middle of town. This one was in the winter of 1965. So many of the town's folks are coming out to enjoy themselves. Oh, little girl, you want to skate too? Well, don't give up. Maybe someone will come and get you? After they have tied their shoelaces. Oh yes, here you go. Don't lose your balance. A little bit more to the right. Uh, uh, a little bit more. Oh, and who is that? That's Kurt Scherucke. I remember you. You were always up for some fun on and off the ice. The spectators are surely getting their money's worth, if it would cost anything. Some of these skaters are quite impressive on the ice. And, little girl, I think now you got the hang of it.
Look, this is my second appearance in this movie, and it's with my brother. Oh gee, I never was able to keep my balance. Um, maybe if I lean forward? My brother's girlfriend to the rescue. She was able to get me to skate without a major fall. Oh, what memories. These times will unfortunately never come back. Remember the soccer field? Well, it was a spectacular success. So it was decided that right next to it, the town would build tennis courts. Well, here they are. But there's not much to do with them in the winter. You need to wait until the spring and the summer comes. Now, speaking of summer, how about a recreational swimming pool for all? The summers can be really hot in Austria, and if you wanted to go swimming in a pool, you had to drive quite far to another bigger city. Plans were hatched to build such a pool in Wieselburg. My father was advocating strongly for it. He even had a model created, and these are the only surviving film documents of this project, as it was never executed. However, there was a low-tech but very charming solution for the swimming issue at Wieselburg. You just went to the local river. Here you can see my mother, a fantastic swimmer, executing immaculate breaststrokes in the small river Erlauf right before its confluence with the big river Erlauf. And this was in 1961. Kids were paddling along in kayaks. Some were sitting on a bridge railing. No one was afraid to be falling into the water. These were cheerier times. I remember these days fondly. You wonder why? Because here I am, intricately exploring the things I can find in the water. No one was really worried about me. I was supposed to stay in the shallow water. And if push came to shove, well, I would have to learn to swim. Oh boy, here comes my brother, in his diving outfit. I bet he had something important to do in the water. And now he's setting up to do his favorite move, making a huge splash and scaring innocent people. Here I am, demonstrating... Uh, uh, I think I'm showing you my... Ooh, what am I showing you? That there is nothing in the can. Hey, Dad, behind the camera, can you help me? Hard to walk here on these pebbles. Let's try and skip some stones. Hmm. I don't think I'm getting the hang of it. A bracelet might be better. Here's a rare appearance of my father, swimming. Still trying to skip stones. Practice makes perfect. Although, I can't guarantee it in my case. Nineteen sixty one was an exciting year. Lots of things were going on in Wieselburg, also the regional competition of the Austrian Gymnastics Union. As customary, all of the participants were first asked to parade through the town center, displaying the union's flags and banners. Of course, the marching band was always a big part of it. Here you can see the town hall with the traffic island and a fountain on it. Oh, I loved going there as a child, and yes, there was a yellow brick road at that time. Getting ready for the competition now. The boys will be showing you the pommel horse jump. That's already pretty good. Another good one here. And a final one. Now the girls will be tackling the uneven bars, a pretty difficult exercise. Very nice. And one more before we go back to the boys. Nothing wrong, you tried. Here come the adult athletes. Let's see what they are doing. It's the parallel bars competition for them. Kenny and Danny, what do you think? It's a strong start by our first contestant. Wow, look at his upper body strength. Great balance. He rolls down, spins. Oh, oh messed up a little bit. Let's see if he can recover on the dismount. 
Oh. oh. None of all jumps. Boys and girls are coming from two different sides. Oops. Oh, this is a great one. Jumps and leaps on the floor. First to girls. Now to boys. Oh, isn't he great? The uneven bars again. Women's competition. Smooth star by our second contestant. Look at her balance and flexibility. Great body control. She sits on the bar, bends down. Wow. Whoa, nails the spin. Transition's over. Her shoulders must hurt. Wow, look how graceful. Wow. Does one more spin. She prepares her dismount. Let's see if she can nail this dismount, Kenny. Here she goes. Wow, Perfect. nails the landing. Now look at the audience. What a well-attended event. Wow, Dan, I would definitely watch this. I would be there too, Kenny. Now to the final competition, the men's horizontal bar. Let's see what he's got. Let's see if he can build momentum here. Spins over the bar. Couple spins. Here we go. He's building up. Nice! Nice smooth transition. Let's see if he can keep going. Oh, a little help. help. Crosses his arms. Here he goes. Let's see how he does in the dismount. The spotter's watching him carefully. Nice. That was a perfect landing. Here we come to the most anticipated part of the event. Awarding the prizes to the best athletes. The judges are meeting and comparing their scores. Here you can see Mr. Tolman, the mayor again, with other dignitaries anticipating the announcement of the winners. Ah, but before this, there is one more exercise in which all of the athletes have to participate in. A rhythmics gymnastic group exercise the likes of which you will never see again. Even the athletes have to smile over this. But now we are ready, the prizes are being awarded. Herr Rürich, our neighbor, a gymnast in his 60s, won a prize. And look at them, how proud they are. A lot of training and effort went into their performances. Also, the younger participants are not forgotten. And a special award goes to the women in this competition. Now the flags get their decoration. A ribbon to remind the teams of their successful participation in this event. Maybe some of the teams will still have these ribbons, even 60 years later. Every year at the beginning of July, Wieselburg celebrated its famous Volksfest, the People's Fest, an agricultural fair that had been the town's tradition for decades. It's the year 1964 and the federal president of the Republic of Austria, Adolf Scherf, is paying his honorary visit. And what an honor it truly was for Dr. Scheruger and Mr. Frank, heads of the Volksfest Committee, to be leading the president through the exhibition. The president was not opposed to having a glass of wine with the ladies, who were dressed in the traditional dresses of the Erlauftal, the valley of the river Erlauf. Mr. Frank is really having a very good time. And see how little security was necessary to get the head of Austria to come and enjoy the day with the local folks. Shouldn't this be the way to spend time with your noted politician?
Yes, cheers to the camera. What a day to celebrate. It's not time to leave the Volksfest 1964 just yet. One more celebrity to greet here. Leopold Figel, the former federal chancellor who negotiated Austria's independence and now head of the state of Lower Austria, came to open the general exhibition and this year's motto was Modern Life with Electricity. And Mr. Figel is known to interact with people on a personal level. <laughs> Here's the still photographer trying to escape the movie camera. Note how spread out the exhibition area is. Several exhibition halls are now available in the year 1964 to show the many goods and services produced in the region. This was not a small fair. On the contrary, it was one of the largest rural exhibitions and even attracted large companies to exhibit in the National Industry Tent. The greatest attraction for many people, and of course for me as a boy, was the area where the rides and the food were. And I saw every bit of the variety shows that the organizing committee put up. We had Maxi Byrne here, a celebrity television comedian, as master of ceremonies leading through the show featuring acrobats, comedians and music. Well, these guys were pretty good. Now on to the clarinet clown. I really don't know what his number was all about. However, I remember this balancing act like it was yesterday. The acrobat could not have been 20 yet. He was doing this incredible balancing high up in the air without any safety. Wow, now balancing and juggling at the same time, incredible. And finally here is Maxi Böhm again, introducing a local folk music band. They are ending this variety show with a snappy Austrian tune that makes people smile and gets them ready for the evening in one of the wine or beer tents. Yes, alcohol was flowing freely at the Volksfest. The Volksfest has always been a very special event. In 1962, for the opening of the fair, it was decided to invite the National Amateur Horseback Riders for a regional competition. What fun to have them first parade through the town center and then have them ride to the grassy area for the competition. And for the ladies who did not want to be on horseback, a Landauer carriage was prepared. This is quite a large number of riders and anticipation is growing since they are now getting ready for the regional horse jumping competition on the 1st of July, 1962. Now, Danny and Kenny, let's tell our audience how this show went on. Here comes our first rider with a lot of speed. I'm excited to see how our contestants do. Cleared the obstacle really well. Oh, that's elegant. The horse Start. is running. Starting off very smooth and fast. Cleared that one. Let's see how they do on this last one. Oh, barely contact hits. there. Another jump. If she picks up speed, maybe she can make up for that. Hopefully, we'll see. Looking good so far. The horse is definitely running fast. Look at that. Reverse direction. Okay, there she comes. Last obstacle? Yeah, nice smooth hurdle. Great run by our first rider. Let's see how the second one does. Oh, speeding up? That's a great jump. Great first hurdle. It. Oh, how elegant. So smooth and fast. Great jump. Nice. Oh, she's doing really well. They're clearing the rails. 
Great round. I'm our second rider also. Oh, here comes our third one. Oh, he's a strong candidate. He looks good. This might be the fastest one yet. Another smooth hurdle. Oh, he's driving that horse. Nice clear. Wow. This horse has such a long stride. It does. That's a great jump. And another one. He's picking up the pace here. They're making great time. Perfectly cleared. The execution is amazing. Three more obstacles. One. Let's see if they can finish strong. Two. Nice. And the last one. Yeah. Nice. Wow. There you go. I think he's our winner. Totally agree. There we are. That was a great run. Great run by the third rider. They deserve that round of applause. Here is the most enchanting part of this film. My father is painting a beautiful picture of cinematographic art with movement and color, showing you the rides in the amusement park of the Volksfest 1964. It doesn't need any narration, just sit back and enjoy. This is Wieselburg's train station around 1961. The town is expecting a noted politician to arrive from Vienna. Yes, even VIPs did travel by steam train at that time. What a spectacle! The brass band is playing. Everybody of any notoriety in town is here. Even a little boy on a tricycle came. I don't think anybody would put on such an honorary greeting these days. Now, the ladies in their traditional dresses again are leading the guests of honor out of the station to the main town square. And here comes the marching band, parading the noted politician through town, playing a festive march until they all arrive at the Festhalle, the meeting hall where the talks and presentations are about to start.
but I was never able to find out what they were actually discussing with this celebrity guest. Quite a mystery to this day. Back to the religious festivities. It is Confirmation Day, and in the Catholic tradition, the bishop comes to confirm every child in their Catholic faith. This is Bishop Franz Chuck, greeting the locals and walking up to the church on a hill in a well-staged procession. Welcome, highly revered shepherd, the Banner reads. This is among the best processions the Catholic Church can put up. And Bishop Chuck is greeting everybody before he enters the church. Come, Creator Spirit, enter with us. This is the overarching motto of this festive day. Confirmation has always been a day of celebration, and right after the service, the many vendors with their balloons, souvenirs, and of course, very sweet pastries are catering to the crowd. People enjoyed the day tremendously. It was also the tradition to honor the fallen soldiers of both world wars at the cemetery in Wieselburg. The Veterans Association provided the festive wreaths and laid them in a very emotional ceremony at the monument of the fallen soldiers, remembering friends and relatives who never returned to their hometown. they never be forgotten and may a light shine for them in eternity. This is a picture of Wieselburg's revered priest, Jakob Wotruber, who had served the town from 1927 to 1958. He passed away in 1963 and here you can see his funeral. A local dignitary's funeral was taken very seriously. It was the tradition that his casket would be carried through town by uniformed pallbearers in a large procession. Here you can see the procession arriving at the town center in front of City Hall. All traffic had to be stopped for this huge funeral. The town's flags and colors were brought out to honor the priest who had married and also buried so many of the town's people over three decades. The new mayor, Mr. Gottfried Tunnel, and local dignitaries like Docent Vista, the factory owner, marched in the procession. See how many priests had also come for this funeral. Here the procession ends. The bells of the church tower accompanying the priest to his peaceful, final resting place. We are back in the year 1960, overlooking a serene little town 
with character and charm. The new exhibition halls for the fair had not yet been built, but excavations for the future buildings can already be seen. At the same time, the little narrow gauge train is still slowly making its way to the train station. Here we are, ending where we started, at the beautiful old market bridge. Now you tell me what time you like best. I am partial. I like this time best. Testing, one, two, three. Can you, can you hear me? <laughs> I asked my friends Danny and Kenny right over there to both of uh, them.